Welcome to Let's Talk a Little Shop, a podcast created by ASD Market Week. Let's Talk a Little Shop aims to help small businesses navigate the rapidly changing retail landscape. Whether you own a brick and mortar store, are an online seller, or both, this podcast provides tangible strategies to keep your cash register ringing. Hi, everyone. This is Michaela with ASD Market Week. And today I am here with Chris from the Merchant Method. Chris, I'm just going to let you introduce um, who you are and what you do to our retailers. Oh my gosh, Michaela, thank you so much for having me. Hi, retailers. I am Chris Gill. I am like you. I am a retailer down to my core. It's in my DNA and I love to shop. Naturally, I was really happy to parlay a career in retail as a retail consultant. And I am also a small business lover. So these days I am a retail consultant and small business coach for indie minded, creative, product based, inventory based entrepreneurs. And and this goes beyond just retail of physical goods, right? You work with restaurateurs, cafe owners, like give them a little bit of a wider understanding of what you work with in terms of retail. Oh, absolutely. Um, if you have a product or a service for which you hold inventory, for which you hold product, and you use team talent, your merchandising skills, you make things, you sell things. I help support you so that you can build profit in clear, achievable steps. It, that, that really is the focus, is making it clear, making it achievable, and making it motivating. So because of our previous conversations, I'm just going to jump right into the meat of yes. what you do and how you work with retailers, because it is very different than most of them are used to. So Chris, let's start with mindset. Tell me how a business owner's values and the way they think about their business and their personal lives really impact their success. For all of us that have this entrepreneurial spirit and are doing the things that we think um, are missing in the world, we want to do it differently. And we come to it from a place of being left out, being overlooked, being forgotten, or being burned about something, just being left behind. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we feel either wronged or we feel <laughs> like we should, that just needs to not be the case. That right. comes from a place of personal value and personal need. Yeah. And so when you have a business owner who um, comes with such passion as a true um, entrepreneur, a true merchant, a true brick and mortar business owner uh, with a mission, mm -hmm. the personal value and the business mission is very conflated. It is almost difficult to pull them apart. And mm -hmm. honestly, you wouldn't want to. Mm -hmm. And so my perspective around supporting business owners, whether you're a, a single owner operator or you have a team of 75 or 80 people, is to partner the sensibilities of like why the business exists your very educated intuition, mm -hmm. um, your values with the strategies so that all the strategies tie all the way back to the very reason why you needed to start the business. Um, yeah. So we have to kind of take that conflated set of values and, and almost calibrate it. How do you help retail business owners define their values and create that alignment? It is about for me in the way that I can do it is to listen and to provide clarity. It's so difficult to explain as a grown adult, all the feelings that you have yeah. and all the thoughts that you have running during the daytime hours and in the evening hours when we are supposed to be asleep. Yeah. And so what I do is I do a lot of investigation, a lot of interviews. I snoop around in a business. <laughs> I ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. to really clarify and crystallize, oh, you mean this. And so while I don't come to work from a writer's perspective, I come to the strategy from that very same place. What are you trying to express? What do you really want? And um, what we're doing is creating internal consistency from the things that we want and the mm -hmm. things that we say to how we put it out there and sell it. Okay. And so... Based on that, how do you help retailers align that to their long-term growth and success? 
Um, I love this part. This is my, my favorite thing, which is right. asking um, and helping retailers, whether you're a high level leader or the business owner, um, mm-hmm. to clarify th- the values of the brand. Often there's like company missions or for many business owners that have like running their own operation for a while, there are values mm-hmm. that guide the product merchandising or the menu assortment or the culling of what customers buy. But mm-hmm. the actual values like depth, intimacy, mm-hmm. sustainability, mm-hmm. community, we're talking about like core values. Yeah. Um, really asking them to prioritize them. And it seems almost impossible to say that security is more important than depth, is more important than sustainability. But when Mm -hmm. we don't lay down a solid foundation that is highly prioritized, we Mm -hmm. spend a lot of time moving blocks Mm -hmm. and we spend um, a lot more time debating things when things could be clearer. So we prioritize the operating values, what will become brand behaviors. And we really look at where a company wants to grow Mm -hmm. to see of the strategies and of the ways we want to grow, what Mm -hmm. moves the needle and what's most relevant to the value. Like it seems very um, internal, seems like a lot of like internal work, like soul work. It's actually Mm -hmm. very numeric. And I can get it down to an index number where I say this scores 150 and mm-hmm. this gives you personal ROI and financial ROI. It's just, it's a process. Um, but this is why brand values and guiding principles mm-hmm. need to be clarified and prioritized. And so a lot of that goes into, um, you know, defining teams and building culture. So, you know, your approach is very unique. I mean, you use co-learning, cognitive learning, and even neurodiversity in the development process um, for a retailer support system. So kind of talk to me about that in relation to building um, a healthy team to support your retail endeavors. Yes. Okay. Okay. So there's kind of two things there. One thing is around culture and climate and the other Mm -hmm. thing is about learning. So Mm -hmm. like, let's just talk about culture and climate first. And then I definitely, definitely want to dive into the learning piece. So oftentimes when I'm talking with owners, we talk, you know, what I hear and where we start the conversation is this is very important to our culture. It's in job descriptions. It's Mm -hmm. in the conversations that happen at leadership and management meetings. Mm -hmm. But then when you actually look at the day-to-day operations and Mm -hmm. the employees who actually establish the relationships with customers, either in a brick and mortar or through order fulfillment or through customer service or through social media, that is where your customer actually experiences the culture and the customer defines what the brand and the culture is to them. Now, there's a lot of ups and downs when it comes to teams, whether you have a team member who is out sick because they got COVID or a very important team member who's out on parental leave or something is happening economically or something's happening societally. The Mm -hmm. climate changes, which makes the culture very difficult to achieve. And so when it comes to managing teams, it's really about creating operational structures Mm -hmm. and um, opportunities for performance and communication and clear expectations Mm -hmm. so that as the climate shifts, the people on the process are less prone to shifting with it. So you can Mm -hmm. actually have the culture that you want. So that's like, that's HR operations and Mm -hmm. HR people management, that bit. The second piece is around learning and being a learning leader. Like I like vote for everyone to be a learning leader. Mm -hmm. I advocate for everyone to learn how they learn. Mm -hmm. And as a leader, I advocate for you to teach other people how to teach particularly on your team. Now, what happens when we're entrepreneurs, and it's like happens to me like a lot, Mm -hmm. is that we think that learning is a very linear process. We think it's academic. We think there's a rubric and the rubric results in like (laughs) cash flow, inventory turn, profit, um, and that it happens more quickly. Well, when we are learning in an environment that is continuing, like will always be ambiguous, uh, will always shift, um, mm-hmm. where there is never accounting for any customer taste. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We have to be dynamic learners. And often I've found for the like hundreds and hundreds of entrepreneurs I've worked with, we are not classic classroom learners. Yes. We're a neurodiverse 
a diverse and overlooked population. So the learning and the teaching and the structure just has to be different. Yeah. Because the typical things don't work. Otherwise, everyone would get an MBA and MBA would work Mm -hmm. for everyone. Mm -hmm. And a system would work for everyone. And it doesn't. It has to be personalized. And you have to know um, how the people on your team and the adults on your team learn, how behavior is shaped Mm -hmm. in order for any of the strategies to actually be implemented in the way that you want. So what do retailers need to know about building and maintaining these new types of cohesive teams? Oh my gosh. Okay. Can we just dive into HR? I Let's feel- do it. Turn it up. <laughs> Let's go. Turn up it's some music not- in the background. Let's go. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about DEI, inclusivity, modern retail HR practices. Talk for yes. as long as you need, because this is like, again, this is a topic that so many people are, are trying to navigate post COVID and all these other, you know, in, in this time. I will share for like us with this like small business, medium business um, Mm -hmm. in this space. It is possible and um, it's gratifying and it's achievable to be profitable Mm -hmm. and to be personable Mm -hmm. and to have your values come forward and change the world. Like these things are not mutually exclusive. For so many um, business owners, when we think about HR, we either think about hiring or firing. Yeah. And very little in between finding the right person or I made the choice in the wrong person. I don't know how to like change that relationship. It needs to end. Mm-hmm. Um, and most people just don't grow up professionally or don't mm-hmm. go to school to do HR related things. Um, it's almost as if you don't want to talk about it in the same way. Some people don't like to talk about money. I love to talk about like weird relationships and I love to talk about money. So when it comes to (laughs) HR, I, I feel like the biggest opportunity we have as a small business community who employs a large part of the workforce, which means Mm -hmm. we impact the economy. If we want a better future, Mm -hmm. we need to start thinking about how we recruit, how we hire, how we train, how we develop, and how we Mm -hmm. promote the people who we are fortunate to lead and manage. Yeah. This bit around... um, you know, but I'm, I know the community doesn't all identify as mom and pop businesses, but what, mm-hmm. you know, when we think about hiring, somehow we've been misinformed to mm-hmm. hire the person we would want to have coffee with or want to have a wine with or mm-hmm. that like we vibe with mm-hmm. or like would totally fit with the culture. It sa- sounds like us, sounds like our brand, dresses like our brand, where we actually should be thinking critically upfront around what is the role. And getting strategic, Mm -hmm. right? So we're not solving on the back end. We're solving on the front end. What does the role need to make the business go in the way I need it to go? And how do I do that in a way that's fully aligned with my brand values and my personal values? So at night, the one of 200 employees I have, I like I can sleep. I'm not thinking too hard about the one or two, two roles that are challenging. Right. And we're hiring for the role and Mm -hmm. we are hiring and and we're asking like real proper interview Mm -hmm. questions. Yes. And we're not listening for answers that delight us, but we're listening for answers and aligning them to the kinds of answers we're looking for that shows capability, consistency, professionalism. Mm -hmm. This is what you can put in a rubric. Yeah. Our interview questions and interview answers, it allows you to strip away what a person looks like, sounds like um, the, you know, a lot of things that decrease the diversity, equity, inclusion and who, what we're hiring, like mm-hmm. what types of, of talent we're hiring. Right. And that piece, the job description, the interview questions should really live through the life of the role. Yeah. or the career journey of an employee. It should translate to onboarding and training. It should translate to annual reviews. It should mm-hmm. translate to the next ladder up job description. Yep. Um, and, and then eventually if you've done your job and there's, you know, they're ready to move on. They have left a better person because they worked for you. Yeah. So these are, these are, um, 
these types of things really require us to do the hard work yeah. of articulating why the role is important, how the role contributes. It is not a checklist. Yeah. It's full capabilities of roles and responsibilities right. Um, right. within an organization. And they just like live with these. So it's work. Yeah. And you know what? Why don't you dig a little bit more into you're not hiring your best friend or the person you'd hang out with. Like, I think that, you know, in retail, many people feel like, oh, I, I want to like my employees. I want to have some sort of, you know, professional but personal tie-ins to them. How, how is that? How can that be detrimental to a business? I feel like when we have um, are making hiring decisions based on personality, mm-hmm. um, we put too much trust in the unspoken, the unclear, and the unsaid. And uh, we put a lot of uh, a lot of faith in, well, if I tell them to do something, we've got each other's vibe and frequency, (laughs) they'll probably Mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't put a lot of forethought into the operations of the business and how that role Mm -hmm. interacts with all the other interdependencies Mm -hmm. in a company. And we know that particularly when we're talking about retail in the like 500,000 to 3 million, we're not siloed roles. There's not one person whose full-time job is X or a group of people whose full-time job is Y. There's a lot of collaboration. And so um, when we don't put a lot of foresight, when we're not asking clear questions, when we're not clear about the kind of answer that would make a good candidate, then uh, we've done a disservice to the employee, potential employee. We've done a disservice to the team, a disservice to the customer because customers are really, really smart. They know when there's dysfunction happening on a team. Mm -hmm. They know when a customer serve, whoever's receiving an email is dodging the email and not answering. We're very smart as customers. So we need to make sure that the puzzle pieces fit and fit well. And, um, you know, uh, a topic within, you know, teams and staffing is diversity and inclusion. What can you share with retailers in that regard? In addition to thinking about the recruiting and hiring process, Mm -hmm. from a day-to-day perspective, starting with the teams that we have now and the people we work with now, whether they're like on your payroll or... um, they are like business partners, vendor partners, freelancers, um, really thinking through this onboarding process and the communication process. Mm-hmm. So oftentimes we think, um, I want this thing to happen. Mm-hmm. I will say this thing will happen. And now mm-hmm. I expect the thing to happen. And I don't understand why this thing is not happening. <laughs> right. We really need to spend, I would really encourage um leaders and business partners, stakeholders, to spend some time researching and trying to understand cognitive behavior Mm -hmm. and cognitive behavior change Mm -hmm. and a concept called scaffolding. Um, And really in corporate speak, we would say setting someone up for success. We would say um, things like, how consistent are they? Uh, Like, how capable are they and how consistently do they display that? Um, And oftentimes, we want to get to consistency. We want to get to meeting and exceeding our expectations quickly when we haven't maybe even actually done the thing we need to do, which is, have we properly informed? Have we properly trained? um, And have we properly checked for understanding? And so I would say when it comes to uh, having an inclusive relationship and being an inclusive employer, the best thing that we can do for ourselves is, and I'm a fast talker, but I would say slow down. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, of course. Slow down in process, slow down in expectations, slow down in delivery. Um, For most people, even thinking about 90 days, 180 days, yeah. When you have only five people on a team seems preposterous because we needed yeah. high performers nine months ago. 
Yeah. Or if we're implementing a tur- like a full turnaround plan because the business is underperforming, we feel compelled to make that happen so fast. Yeah. But in the same way that yo-yo dieting is a bad idea, yeah. yo-yo strategies breaks trust with your team and it breaks trust with your customer. Like yeah. slow is smooth and smooth is mm-hmm. fast. And it's yeah. okay to slow down of course. to make sure that we get it as good as we can get it for the team that we're employing. Yes. Awesome. So let's let's kind of wrap this into, you know, you're talking about systems, strategy, foundation, building for the future. So if if someone does this and like whether they're working with you or this is something that they've kind of been navigating on their own um, because they're pretty woke. um, How do establishing the values, creating that culture and having a soul and very level expectations. How does that translate into growth and profit for their business? Oh, I love this question. Okay. So I think oftentimes uh, the be- the best leaders that I've worked with that are very creative and visionary, they have a, a strong sense of where they want to be in five, 10 years or where they, or where they want to be from a revenue perspective. Yes. What is often missing in between the goals and the job description is a clear understanding of who does what when. Yeah. And so typically, y'all, I would just research RACI charts, R-A-C-I. Now, they're not a good fit for a lot of the type of businesses I work with, but the concept can be adjusted for your business. Okay. And it gives you the opportunity to identify the most important milestones or disciplines that make the business go Mm -hmm. and clearly identify and articulate like who really advocates for this function, who Mm -hmm. um, really oversees it, who do we go to um, for growth in this area, who Mm -hmm. supports them and who like provides the final yes or no, because the final yes or no, the final sponsorship does not always have to be the owner. Um, And so forcing ourselves to really detail the operations of the business Mm -hmm. almost starts with a, a lot of like, oh, a lot of things are undefined. Right. It is awesome to hone in on what feels murky and try and clear it up little by little. I feel like that piece um, provides the end-to-end transparency that a lot of brands would benefit from. What are three tips that you would give to retailers as they move their businesses into their next phase of evolution post-COVID? I love this. Okay. (laughs) The first one um, that I would say is be a learning leader. Okay. Number one. Yep. So either either learn how you learn or pick up a book that talks about leading in 2022. Okay. And beyond. Number one. Okay. So be a learning leader. The second thing is um, ask yourself to get clearer and clearer about the things that are important that you need or that you want. So the clearer we can get to expressing ourselves, the better. Mm. Um, and the third piece is we all need help. We all need thought partners. Like we all need thought partners. <laughs> Find someone. It could be anyone that you trust um, for whom you could be a thought partner with to help you advance your thinking about your approach to business. It could be a mastermind. It could be your neighbor, someone in your BIA, any one of your groups. Identify this partner that will help you force this strategy that you're developing in your mind. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. Thanks for listening. To learn more, visit ASD Market Week at asdonline.com. To listen to more great episodes, be sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, or Spotify, and make sure to rate us too.